Hey everyone, thanks for coming by. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 321. And today, we'll talk about Enko Utosu, the grandfather of modern karate. If you don't know my voice, my name's Jeremy. Jeremy Lesniak, I'm the founder at Whistlekick. I'm the host on this show. And I love martial arts. That's why I do this. That's why I do all of this. And I hope you enjoy it. If you want to find our other episodes, you can find them at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. You can find all of our products from sparring gear to what else do we have right now? Kicking paddles, great apparel, shirts and hoodies and baby onesies, all kinds of cool stuff. Find that over at whistlekick.com or a lot of it is even on Amazon. And of course, it is available via Prime. So free shipping. Let's talk about today's subject, Enko Utosu. One of the most remarkable founding masters of karate is Enko Utosu. Utosu is regarded by many as the father of modern karate, even though Gichin Funakoshi is more often given this title, mostly because Funakoshi was responsible for promoting karate all over Japan. Since Utosu founded most of the activities in karate, and Funakoshi trained under Utosu, we might consider Utosu as the grandfather of modern karate. Now, there's a bit of confusion with his name. The name Anko Utosu may have been confused from some writing. There are two common sets of kanji in Japanese, the on and the kun, and both of them can be used interchangeably. So we've got the name Yasutsuni Utosu and the alternative name Anko Shishu, and they're technically the same name. Now that confusion of who was who began when a Japanese translator named Shingo Ichida used Itosu and Shisu in the same book describing the same person, but a lot of people who read it thought that there were two different people. Now, since there are no real firm rules between which kanji should be used in which situation, Anko Utosu, kind of a hybrid, is what's generally accepted now. Utosu was born in 1830 in Gibo Village, Shuri, Ryokyu Kingdom. He grew up with his father, who was very strict and really harsh in implementing discipline. Moreover, their family was a kemochi, a family of position, and it was required that they be strict. As a child, Utosu was physically abused by his father and even got regular beatings with a stick, even though he was really small as a kid. His father's reasoning was wanting Utosu to develop a strong personality and a warrior-like spirit. Utosu's introversion and extreme shyness may be due to this kind of discipline and his smaller size. It was difficult for him, but this kind of setup as a kid molded him into what he became in his later years. Itosu was well-educated with Chinese classics and calligraphy. He was in the Peiching class under the Ryukyu Kingdom caste system. Having exemplified excellent calligraphy skills, Itosu acquired the position of secretary for the Soshikuri, the administrative office of the Ryukyu Kingdom. Itosu began learning karate at an early age, as it was customary for families of his position to train in the martial arts. His first teacher was Nagahama Chikudon Peichin, and he progressed with his training quickly. He became a powerful disciple in a short time, and at the age of 16, he became a student bodyguard of the famed Sokon, also known as Bushi Matsumura. He eventually became the best disciple of this man, Matsumura. Aside from Itosu, Matsumura had another excellent student named Kiyuna Peichin. Both Itosu and Kiyuna were known for their great punching power. One of the stories from that time was the intense makawara practice of Kiyuna. The makawara, or a post tree that would be hit. If you're not a karate practitioner, you might not recognize that. But bottom line, sometimes people make them out of two by fours now, and they'll, they'll put a, a pad on it to soften it, so you're not quite directly hitting the wood. The makawara, according to this story, would break in less than a month under Kiyuna's fabled strength. Afterwards, he decided to use a tree for a makawara, and he tied a leather sandal there just for a bit of cushion. Now, it seems like a myth, but according to this legend, the tree died in 10 days. That's how strong Kiyuna was claimed to be. There's also a story told by Nagamini Shoshu, a former committee member of the Protection of Cultural Assets Department of Shuri. According to him, when he was about 10 years old, this is 1907, he saw Itosu visiting Kiyuna at the guardhouse during Kiona's breaks as a guard in Tamaudan. 
He described them both as muscular and their fists full of calluses from the intense Makawara training. Eventually, Nagamini became a student of Kiyona, and he witnessed how Hitose and Kiyona practiced kata together. He was amazed at how powerfully, how beautifully the two masters executed kata. Itosu remained a secretary for 30 years until the Sho dynasty ended in 1879. After that, he started his own printing business. Following his passion, he also taught karate to a few students, and that group included Gichin Funakoshi. These karate classes were held at Itosu's house at midnight to be secretive. This type of setup lasted for 20 years, from 1880 to 1900. During this period, Itosu had another good but unruly student. That student was Choki Motobu, or also known as Motobu the Monkey, because of his great agility. Motobu was often involved in fights because he wanted to try out his new techniques, so he'd go down to the Tsuji, the red light district, with other people without the consent of his instructor, Itosu. Furthermore, the techniques were dangerous, so he'd often injure the person he was attacking. And it was because of these incidents that Itosu expelled Motobu from the class and Motobu later became a master himself, founding his own school, the Motobu Ryu. In 1902, Itosu made a big decision by allowing karate to be taught to the public. And that changed his previous view, just complete flip-flop. He was granted permission to teach karate in public schools at Shori. And at the age of 75, he began teaching in the prefectural Daiichi College and the prefectural teacher's training college. Around this time, Itosu had developed the Pinyon Kata series. It's a series of five empty hand forms allegedly derived from older katas, such as Kuzanku and Shanan, but he revised them to be easier for newer students to learn. The Pinyon Katas serve as the introduction to learning more difficult katas, such as Daihanchi, also called Daifanchi, Teki, and Pasai, or Basai. And the first ones to learn these katas were junior high school students at Okinawa's first junior prefectural high school, where he was a part-time teacher. Itosu was also credited for breaking down the complex Nahanchi kata into the three modern katas, Nahanchi, Shodan, Nidan, and Sandan. Moreover, Itosu also created the Rohai kata from which Funakoshi based his Mikyo kata. Itosu was known to be a very peaceful person. He avoided fights and arguments as much as possible. And he died March 11, 1915, in Shuri, Okinawa, Japan. We dug up some great stories exemplifying Itosu's strength, probably the thing he was most famed for. Gichin Funakoshi recalled Itosu to have extraordinary strength and physique. As per Funakoshi, Itosu could crush a green bamboo stalk in his fist. He could also take heavy blows without even being hurt. Itosu used to arm wrestle his friends, and no one ever won against him. Kind of seeing like a, a, an old school Chuck Norris thing going on here, right? Itosu stories, maybe the, the precursor to Chuck Norris stories. There's a story where an attacker punched Itosu in the back, but Itosu didn't flinch. Instead, Itosu grabbed the attacker's wrist. And as Itosu's grip was so strong, the attacker couldn't break away. So he dragged the attacker to a crowded restaurant, made him kneel and wait while he ordered drinks, and he only let go of the attacker's wrist when the drinks arrived. When Itosu attended a bullfight with a friend, one of the bulls broke free and dashed through the frightened crowd. Everyone panicked and ran, but Itosu stood his ground. When the bull approached him angrily, Itosu landed a powerful punch on the bull's nose, then took it by the horns and wrestled it to the ground. I wonder if this was inspiration for Oyama's bullfights. Part of Itosu's training with Sokan Matsumura was using a makawara, or striking post. Normally, a wooden post is used, but he once used a stone wall covered with a leather sandal for him to hit instead. With just a few punches, the stone behind the sandal broke through the wall. Eventually, Itosu destroyed the stone wall itself without having any injuries. Itosu once challenged a bully named Tamayoshi to a fair fight because the latter ridiculed the Shuri style of fighting. However, Instead of fighting fairly, Tamayoshi's gang members attacked him, and some were even armed with clubs. The first attacker was supposed to land a powerful punch to Itosu, but Itosu managed to land a triple renzuki, or multiple rapid punches, first, knocking the attacker unconscious immediately. The second and third attackers, who were armed with clubs, 
also failed to hit him. Tosu grabbed the first man's arm while landing a sidekick on the jaw of the second man, who was also immediately knocked out. The first man was kicked in the groin and rendered useless. The fourth attacker was Tomoyoshi himself. He threw what would have been a lethal punch at Otosu's head, but Otosu was able to dodge it with a sidestep and broke Tomoyoshi's arm in the process using a shuto or open-handed strike. When Otosu was 75 years old, he was challenged by a judo champion half his age to an arranged fight. The judoka even promised to defeat Otosu, quote, as gently as possible without doing any serious damage. As the match started, the judoka grabbed Itosu by the jacket to execute a throw, but Itosu was quicker. He punched the judoka to the solar plexus, using only his left hand, which resulted in a quick victory. The judoka collapsed in a heap and only managed to recover when Itosu gave him first aid. This guy sounds like someone that I, I might have been afraid to train with. Right? Pretty hardcore. And now... In summary, I guess, we have Itosu's 10 precepts of karate, Tode Jukun. And if you're familiar with Funakoshi's 10 precepts of karate, some of these might sound familiar. In October 1908, Itosu wrote the 10 precepts of karate to promote and explain the martial art. The translation is as follows. Karate did not develop from Buddhism or Confucianism. In the past, the Shorinru school and the Shoreru school were brought to Okinawa from China. Both of these schools have strong points, which I will now mention before there are too many changes. 1. Karate is not merely practiced for your own benefit. It can be used to protect one's family or master. It is not intended to be used against a single assailant, but instead as a way of avoiding a fight should one be confronted by a villain or ruffian. 2. The purpose of karate is to make the muscles and bones hard as rock and to use the hands and legs as spears. If children were to begin training in Tang Te while in elementary school, then they will be well suited for military service. Remember the words attributed to the Duke of Wellington after he defeated Napoleon. Quote, the Battle of Waterloo was won on the playing fields of Aton. 3. Karate cannot be learned quickly. Like a slow moving bull, it eventually travels a thousand miles. If one trains diligently every day, then in three or four years, one will come to understand karate. Those who train in this fashion will discover karate. Four, in karate, training of the hands and feet are important, so one must be thoroughly trained on the makawara. In order to do this, drop your shoulders, open your lungs, take hold of your strength, grip the floor with your feet, and sink your energy into your lower abdomen. Practice using each arm one to two hundred times each day. Five, when one practices the stances of tang te, be sure to keep your back straight. Lower your shoulders, put strength in your legs, stand firmly, and drop your energy into your lower abdomen. 6. Practice each of the techniques of karate repeatedly, the use of which is passed by word of mouth. Learn the explanations well and decide when and in what manner to apply them when needed. Enter, counter, release is the rule of releasing hand. Torite. 7. You must decide if karate is for your health or to aid your duty. That is my favorite one. Eight. When you train, do so as if on the battlefield. Your eyes should glare, shoulders drop, and body harden. You should always train with intensity and spirit, and in this way, you will naturally be ready. Nine. One must not overtrain. This will cause you to lose the energy in your lower abdomen and will be harmful to your body. Your face and eyes will turn red. Train wisely. And ten. In the past, Masters of karate have enjoyed long lives. Karate aids in developing the bones and muscles. It helps the digestion as well as the circulation. If karate should be introduced beginning in the elementary schools, then we will produce many men each capable of defeating 10 assailants. I further believe that this can be done by having all students at the Okinawa Teachers College practice karate. In this way, after graduation, they can teach at the elementary schools at which they have been taught. I believe this will be a great benefit to our nation and our military. It is my hope you will seriously consider my suggestion. Anko Otosu, October 1908. That's the end of the script I have, but just going off script a little bit, a lot of what he's talking about here is stuff that we still discuss today, stuff that we debate today. Number seven, you must decide if karate is for your health or to aid your duty. Is it personal development or is it self-defense? It can be both, but he's suggesting a focus on one 
or the other. He's talking about slow and steady progress. He's talking about training hard, but not training too much. He's talking about the benefits, both physical and self-defense. And there's a lot of great stuff in there. So what did you think? Let me know. Hit me up. Email jeremy at whistlekick.com. Comment on the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Let us know on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And if you want Pinterest, Google+. I don't know. I love doing these history episodes. And I want to give another shout out to Lester for doing all this great research. So thank you, Lester. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your faith that when you tune in, I'm going to say something that you want to hear. So I hope you have a a good week. I hope that this episode inspired you, whether you're a karate practitioner or not. I'm fired up. I'm actually going to go do some kata right now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.